this is Office of Readings for the Feast of Our Lady of the Rosary. And also we have a memorial uh, for all those, the uh, 1,200 people uh, brutally and sadistically slaughtered and the uh, Hamas uh, raid and kidnapping in uh, Israel on October 7th, 2023, and also in prayer and memory of all those who were killed in this war, the uh, especially the children, all those, and for the conversion of Hamas, if it's at all the, the those consumed with hatred and Hezbollah, to, if it's the Lord's will, to uh, God is lo a God of love form of Christianity, and if not that far, for a conversion to uh, uh, God uh, uh, is merciful and compassionate form of Islam if that's uh, if that's God's will and for peace and for the protection of the people of Lebanon the, the civilian people who are being used as human shields among other things that they're in in in, uh, in Gaza and all the people their devastation especially the children and the traumatic situation for them. For all those in, in Sudan, South Sudan, Nigeria, where Christians are persecuted by Boko Haram, murdered, kidnapped, raped, and uh, with little seem to be little protest from the Western governments and even from their own government, it seems. So, and And Office of Readings for uh, the Feast of Our Lady of the Rosary. And we'll have the, the second reading. We might even have a third reading today. Um, and the rest will be from actually uh, Monday week three. The Office of Readings for Monday week three. I'm using the Liturgy of the Hours, Volume 4, Ordinary Time, Weeks 18-34, published by Catholic Book Publishing Corporation, 1975, <clears throat> which the uh, Ordinary, beginning on page 963, and the readings beginning on 345 for Monday of the 27th week in Ordinary Time, and the the reading, the optional reading, which I will do for Our Lady of the Rosary on page 1471. <clears throat> o God, come to my assistance. O Lord, make haste to help me. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning is now and ever shall be, world without end, amen. Alleluia. <clears throat> Come thou, almighty King, help us thy praise to sing, Father of my Son, most glorious Spirit, victorious, Come and reign over us, ancient of days. You alone to be adored. Pour out the Spirit's store upon us here. Grant that we may in Christ live by his sacrifice and may we know the price that Jesus paid. Hail Mary, full of grace, help us to see the face of Christ your Son. By these beads we acclaim Jesus at the saving name. For him 
we too proclaim, let it be done. Hail Mary, full of grace, free from all sinful trace, pray for us now, promise rewards to reap, setting out for the deep, and with your aid we keep baptism's vow. Hail Mary, full of grace, come make a dwelling place. For Jesus Christ, within our heart, there his sacred chain. May God in goodness deign to hold his reign. Hail Mary, full of grace. <clears throat> Christ is the glory for our race. Lead us to praise the Father of all might, his Son, the light from light and spirit giving sight in endless gaze. O Mary, Mother of the Church, pray with us and for us. Through your example and intercession, may we learn the lesson of faithful prayer, just as through our meditation on the mysteries of the Rosary, we learn the lesson of faithful life taught by you, ever pointing to your Son, our one mediator, Jesus Christ. With all prayer and supplication, pray at every opportunity in the Spirit. To that end, be watchful with all perseverance and supplications for all the Holy Ones. Ephesians 6, 1 through 8. Uh, uh, Ephesians 6, 18. Antiphon 1. Our God will be made manifest. He will not come in silence. Psalm 50. Genuine love of God. I have come not to abolish the law, but to bring it to perfection. Matthew 5, 17. <clears throat> the God of gods, the Lord, has spoken and summoned the earth from the rising of the sun to its setting. Out of Zion's perfect beauty he shines. Our God comes, he keeps silence no longer. Before him fire devours, around him tempest rages. He calls on the heavens and the earth to witness his judgment of his people. Summon before me my people, who made covenant with me by sacrifice. The heavens proclaim his justice, for God himself is the judge. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Our God will be made manifest. He will not come in silence. Antiphon 2. Offer to God the sacrifice of praise. Alleluia. Listen, my people, and I will speak. Israel, I'll testify against you, for I am God, your God. I accuse you, lay the charge before you. I find no fault with your sacrifices. Your offerings are always before me. I do not ask more bullets from your farms, nor goats from among your herds, for I own all the beasts of the forest, beasts in their thousands on my hills. I know all the birds in the sky. All that moves in the field belongs to me. Were I hungry, I would not tell you, for I own the world and all it holds. Do you think I eat the flesh of bulls or drink the blood of goats? Pay your sacrifice of thanksgiving to God and render him your votive offering. Call on me in the day of distress and I will free you and you shall honor me. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen.
Offer to God the sacrifice of praise. And three, <clears throat> I want a loving heart more than sacrifice, knowledge of my ways more than holocaust. But God says to the wicked, how can you recite my commandments and take my covenant on your lips? You who despise my law and throw my words to the wind. You who see a thief and go with him, who throw in your lot with adulterers, who bri unbridle your mouth for evil, whose tongue is plotting crime. You who sit and malign your brother and slander your own mother's son. You do this, and should I keep silence? Do you think that I am like you? Mark this, you who never think of God, lest I seize you and you cannot escape. A sacrifice of thanksgiving honors me. I will show God's salvation to the upright. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. <clears throat> Father, accept us the sacrifice of praise, so that we may go through life unburdened by sin, walking in the way of salvation and always giving thanks to you. <clears throat> I want a loving heart more than sacrifice, knowledge of my ways more than holocausts. <clears throat> Listen, my people, and I will speak. I am the Lord, your God. Page 345. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to Timothy from the second chapter, the first through the 15th verses, a call to prayer. First of all, I urge that petitions, prayers, intercessions, and thanksgiving be offered for all men, especially for kings and those in authority, that we may be able to lead undisturbed and tranquil lives in perfect piety and dignity. Prayer of this kind is good, and God our Savior is pleased with it, for he wants all men to be saved and to come to know the truth. And the truth is this, God is one, one also is the mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself as a ransom for all. The truth, this truth was attested at the fitting time. I have been made its herald and apostle. Believe me, I am not lying, but speak the truth. The teacher of the nations in the true faith. It is my wish then that in every place men shall offer prayers with blameless hands held aloft, and be free from anger and dissension. Similarly, the women must deport themselves properly. They should dress modestly and quietly, and not be decked out in fancy hairstyles, gold ornaments, pearls, or costly clothing. Rather, as becomes women who profess to be religious, their adornment should be good deeds. A woman must learn in silence and be completely submissive. I do not permit a woman to act as teacher, or in any way to have authority over a man, she must be quiet. For Adam was created first, Eve afterward. Moreover, it was not Adam who was deceived, but the woman. It was she who was led astray and fell into sin. She will be saved through childbearing, provided she continues in faith and love and holiness, her chastity, of course, being taken for granted. Responsory from 1 Timothy 2, 5-6 and Hebrews 2, 17. There is only one God, Alleluia, Alleluia, and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus, Alleluia, Alleluia. He gave himself as a ransom for all. He had to become like his brothers in every way, Alleluia, Alleluia so that he might show them compassion. He gave himself as a ransom for all. Alleluia, alleluia. So St. Paul calls us to a prayer diet. Now in a diet, you have a diversity 
of foods. You might be a special, special thing that you're supposed to have, you know, protein and <clears throat> good carbs and <clears throat> roughage, maybe, and uh, vegetables and uh, good fats and things like that. And a proportion and according to your needs. If you just ate uh, like ch a chicken breast, let's say, uh, and it did only that, your diet would be unbalanced. And so it is in our prayer life. We need to have a, a wide variety of prayer uh, conversations with God. The, uh, and, and today, the Feast of the Lady, the Rosary. The Rosary is, is a wonderful mode of prayer and a scriptural meditation on the mysteries and of, uh, of Christ's life. And his glory is his death and suffering and his resurrection and victory and his glorious second coming and our our resurrection also. So he said, I urge that petitions, prayers and intercessions and thanksgiving be offered for all men. And we said, oh, why? How could I be thankful for all men? How about how could I be thankful for for people who do uh, horrible uh, atrocities like Hamas and Hezbollah and uh, groups like that, Boko Haram, all that. How could I be uh, th thankful for uh, the terrible t t casualties in in the uh, Hamas-Israeli war, which Hamas started, I might add. Um, the, uh, how can we give thanks? Well, we give thanks because God will use anything we turn over to him. The only thing we don't turn over is unrepented sin. Everything else God will use towards our sanctification. God acts in patience when it comes to this world. So, and we should pray for all those in authority that they may defend all human life, that they <clears throat> may be virtuous and not greedy and not uh, vicious and, and, and uh, defend all human life from conception throughout to natural death, and to promote life, care of life, care for all people, and, uh, and call all people to uh, rise to their true potential in virtue and in, uh, in uh, contribution to society. That we may live tranquil wives in perfect piety and dignity. So prayer of this kind is good to pray for the authorities. Some people say, well, they're, they're so bad, you know, there's civil authorities throughout the world. I can't pray for them. Pray for them more. Pray for them more. And God our Savior is pleased with prayer and pleased with intercessory prayer when we pray for other people. Some people say, oh, uh, petition, that's the lowest form of prayer. Oh, no, it can be the highest if it's filled with love. And all all these forms of prayer, all the wide varieties of prayer, uh, praying with the Holy Scriptures, uh, but praying as we're doing now the office, the divine office, praying hymns, praying with other people, uh, just conversational prayer with God, just uh, sometimes a lifting up of the eyes to God, in practicing the presence of God, that he's here with you, he's here with me, he's here in, in all of our situations, in all of our struggles, he's here, he's here with us. He said, and God our Savior is pleased with it. He wants all men, not just some, not just people he predetermines, he doesn't predetermine anybody to either heaven or hell, but he predestines us for heaven, if we will accept that. But he will not force us. He will give us the grace, and there's this great ocean of grace all around us of God's uncreated energies, of his, his mercy, of his goodness, of his love. But often we are so self-centered, we die of thirst in this ocean. 
And he wants all men to be saved. That needs to be repeated. He wants all men to be saved. And he's pouring out the grace for that. So we should pray more and more to be channels of that grace to other people. And come to know the truth. So it's not like, uh, oh, all religions are the same. There's no difference. Everything is just this. There's no need to come to Christ. Oh, no. Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. Christ is the mediator, as he said. God is one and also is the mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus, who is God and man. That's why he's the bridge. That's why he's the mediator. That's why he is the savior. And the, tr the truth is this. God is one, and we Trinitarians are accused by anti-Trinitarians of being Trithius, that's having three gods, no, we do not. We have one and absolutely one God, one in being and distinct in person. God who is love and can't be eternal love if he's not more than one person because he's the only being in eternity. So the truth was attested at the fitting time. I have been made its herald and apostle, which he always is emphasizing his, his apostolic credentials because it's questioned. He's not one of Hoidodica. He's not one of the Twelve. But he is called on a mission. That's what an apostle is. One called on a mission. And we're all given that vocation through our baptism and confirmation, through our, our faith in Christ. If we have a living faith, it's not to be a private thing. We should live this publicly. And we should be an example to others so that people will see what living in Christ means, what transformation of life can mean, what a, the struggle is as we stumble along. But Christ is there with us. And hope, Christ our hope, is there for us in everything. And he, uh, experienced Paul, experience this, as it's called, to be the teacher of the nations, to be the apostle to the Gentiles in true faith. And he says, it is my wish then that every place men shall offer prayers with blameless hands held aloft. So this is uh, an ancient prayer gesture going back probably to the Egyptians, uh, the ancient Egyptians, uh, the, the Bronze Age at least, from the paintings in, in the tombs. And be free from anger and dissension. So we're, we're told that human anger does not fulfill God's will, especially when it's uncontrolled and uh, comes from a hurt ego. So not that we deny our feelings, we face them. But he said there shouldn't be dissension in the area of doctrine. The, be faithful to the full deposit of faith and uh, and call everyone to do it, especially those who have that duty, the greatest, the hierarchs, to, to uh, teach this and encourage them to persevere, indeed boldly teach the fullness of the faith in the, in the face of, of the contempt or even the persecution of society. And then he says, he talks about uh, women dressing modestly, which is really something, especially when you come to church, you should be, it shouldn't be revealing, nor should we going out into, into public be such. And this is true for men too. Uh, but, uh, and you should be, we should be, uh, he says, uh, you know, don't, uh, you know, pour out all this money for very, very ha fancy hairstyles. Uh, you know, very, very, very fancy things. I, I often think of the uh, the late uh, French aristocracy in the late 18th century, where the hairstyles were absolutely uh, ridiculous. You know, there was one that people had. She had a model of a of a of a, of a ship in her in her hair. So that's it, and wigs and all of the stuff uh, with that. But 
and he says, gold ornaments, pearls, and costly clothing. Well, some people say, well, don't you wear that in church? Which all of, what about all these gorgeous vestments? That's for the glory of God. It's not for the glory of the priest. And so we dress to glorify God, and people should dress well coming to church. If you were going to see you know, the president or the, uh, a king or queen or something like that, or some uh, important a person, you would dress up, you'd dress, you'd be quite gussied up, wouldn't you? But when we go to church, it, 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 Jesus Christ is truly present there. We should be uh, well-dressed. Of course, uh, if we don't have the means for that, that should not keep us away. Remember what St. James said, but you know, someone who was poorly dressed came in, uh, and they, the person was treated contemptuously, but some rich person with gold rings and all this stuff, he was uh, ushered right up to the front. Uh, I, I think of that, you know, see, of, uh, especially those people in power who try to um, manipulate this, try to manipulate God. Like, uh, you know, Putin always wants this to be shown in church, lighting a candle and making the sign of the cross. But uh, his, his hands are covered with the blood of, of of scores of thousands of innocents, not to mention the oppression of his own people, and uh, with uh, and his captivity of the church in, in there in Russia, there, with, under uh, Patriarch Kirill, who was calling this w wicked war a, 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 some sort of crusade, some sort of holy war. It's a unholy war against Ukraine. So anyway, we should have that, so we should be well-dressed. And the church should be decked out in beautiful colors, beautiful things, beautiful vestments. We should have you know, the candles, all of that, the, all of this to uh, incite devotion and to uh, draw the aesthetic of, of, of the presence of God in that beauty. The beauty is the beauty of holiness to some extent. It is also the holiness of beauty. And so, so our adornment, and this is for men as much as for women, and maybe more so, adornment should be good deeds. So we should learn in silence, it's all, but we also need to speak up. When the time comes, one of the problems now is that people who should be speaking up to defend the defenseless to, to uh, uh, issue not just calls, but demands for, for justice and peace and, and freedom and equality and all that, uh, we often permit ourselves to be cowed in silence. Because now with the soft totalitarianism in the West, uh, from the left especially, uh, becoming less soft and becoming harder, Things, uh, uh, the, the future doesn't look good, but we look beyond. We look to Christ and his return. We look to meeting Christ when we pass from this mortal life, this veil of tears. But does this mean that we should be indifferent to things? No, we should be very active and very, uh, very active uh, uh, politically. We should be very active socially. We should be very active in helping those who are truly suffering. Our adornment should be good deeds. And we should be completely submissive to the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, Paul, in this, or the author of this, um, the human author, I said, I will not permit a woman to act as a teacher. Well, he's losing out in that. Who were the first people to proclaim the resurrection? Women. Who did Jesus show himself first to at the resurrection? Women. So, uh, and I've had wonderful women teachers uh, in the area of religion. I've had wonderful women teachers in the area of just about everything. So, and so... Uh, let me say 
So we should this the call to chastity that he calls to women that is even more strongly needed for men who are often uh, 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 encouraged in, in machismo to quote unquote conquer women to treat women as as uh, just an object of lust and just something to be oppressed and the uh, and false forms of feminism are encouraging women to do the same to men or to each other. Remember what St. Paul had to say about that, or shall we say the Holy Spirit had to say about that in the first and second chapters of Romans. The second reading from a treatise on Cain and Abel by St. Ambrose, Bishop. Book 1, 934, 38-39. Pray especially for the whole body of the church. Offer God a sacrifice of praise and fulfill your vows to the Most High. If you praise God, you offer your vow and fulfill the promise you have made. So the Samaritan leper, healed by the Lord's word of command, gained greater credit than the other nine. He alone returned to Christ praising God and giving thanks. Jesus said of him, there was no one to come, was there no one to come back and thank God except this foreigner? He tells him, stand up and go your way, for your faith has made you whole. The Lord Jesus, in his divine wisdom, taught you about the goodness of the Father, who knows how to give good things, so that you might ask for the things that are good from goodness itself. He urges you to pray earnestly and frequently, not offering long and wearisome prayers, but praying often and with perseverance. Lengthy prayers are usually filled with empty words, while neglect of prayer results in indifference to prayer. Again, Christ urges you, when you ask forgiveness for yourself, to be especially generous to others, so that your actions may commend your prayer. The Apostle, too teaches you how to pray. You must avoid anger and contentiousness so that your prayer may be serene and wholesome. He tells you also that every place is a place of prayer. Though our, though our Savior says, go into your room. But by room, you must understand, not a room enclosed by walls that imprison your body, but the room that is within you. The room where you hide your thoughts, where you keep your affections. This room of prayer is always with you, wherever you are, and it is always a secret room where only God can see you. You are told to pray especially for the people, that is, for the whole body, for all its members, the family of your mother, the church. The badge of membership in this body of, is love for each other. If you pray only for yourself, you pray for yourself alone. Each one prays for himself. He receives less from God's goodness than the one who prays on behalf of others. But as it is, because each prays for all, we are all, in fact, praying for each one. To conclude, if you pray only for yourself, you will be praying, as we said, for yourself alone. But if you pray for all, you will pray for, all will pray for you, for you are included in all. In this way, there is a great recompense. Through the prayers of each individual, the intercession of the whole people is gained for each individual. There is no pride, but an increase of humility and a richer harvest from prayer. Hear, O God, my cry for help. Alleluia, alleluia. Listen to my prayer from the ends of the earth. I call to you. Alleluia, alleluia. You, my God, have received my vows and given me the heritage of those who fear your name. Alleluia, alleluia. From the ends of the earth I call to you. Alleluia, alleluia. Father, your love for us surpasses all our hopes and desires. Forgive our failings, keep us in your peace, and lead us in the way of salvation. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. From a sermon of St. Bernard Abbott, this is on page 1471. 
Sermon on the Aqueduct. We should imitate, meditate on the mysteries of salvation. The child to be born of you will be called holy. The Son of God, the fountain of wisdom, the word of the Father on high. Through you, blessed virgin, this word will become flesh. So that even though, as he says, I am in the Father and the Father is in me, it is still true for him to say, I come forth from God and am here. In the beginning was the word, the spring was gushing forth, yet still within himself. Indeed, the word was with God, truly dwelling in an accessible light. And the Lord said from the beginning, I think thoughts of peace and not of affliction. Yet your thought was locked within you, and whatever you thought, we did not know. For who knew the mind of the Lord, or who was his counselor? And so the idea of peace came down to do the work of peace. The word was made flesh and even now dwells among us. It is by faith that he dwells in our hearts, in our memory, our intellect, and penetrates even into our imagination. What concept would man have of God if he had not first fashioned an image of him in his heart? By nature, incomprehensible and inaccessible, he was invisible and unthinkable. But now he wished to be understood, to be seen, and thought of. <clears throat> but how, you ask, was this done? He lay in a manger and rested on a virgin's breast. He preached on a mountain and spent the night in prayer. He hung on a cross, grew pale in death, and roamed free among the dead and ruled over those in hell. He rose again on the third day and showed the apostles the wounds of the nails, the signs of victory, and finally, in their presence, he ascended to the sanctuary of heaven. How can we not contemplate this story in truth, piety, and holiness? Whatever of all this I consider, it is God I am considering. And all this he is my God. I have said it is wise to meditate on these truths. And I have thought it right to recall the abundant sweetness <coughs> given by the fruits of this priestly root. And Mary, drawing abundantly from heaven, has brought this sweetness to overflow for us. O Virgin Mary, no other daughter of Jerusalem is your equal. Alleluia, alleluia, for you are the mother of the King of Kings. You are the Queen of Heaven and of angels. Alleluia, alleluia, blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. Alleluia, alleluia, hail full of grace, the Lord is with you. Alleluia, Alleluia. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. Alleluia. Alleluia. The Te Deum, found on page 616. You are God, we praise you. You are the Lord, we acclaim you. You are the Eternal Father. All creation worships you. To you all angels, all the powers of heaven, cherubim and seraphim sing in endless praise. Holy, holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. The glorious company of apostles praise you. The noble fellowship of prophets praise you. The white-robed army of martyrs praise you. Throughout the world, the Holy Church acclaims you. Father of majesty unbounded, your true and only Son worthy of all worship and the Holy Spirit advocate and guide. You, Christ, are the King of glory, the eternal Son of the Father. When you became man to set us free, you did not spurn the virgin's womb. You overcame the sting of death and opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. You are seated at God's right hand in glory. We believe that you will come and be our judge. Come then, Lord, help your people, bought with the price of your own blood, and bring us with your saints to glory everlasting. Save your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance. Govern and uphold them now and always. Day by day we bless you. We praise your name forever. Keep us today, Lord, from all sin. Have mercy on us, Lord, have mercy. Lord, show us your love and mercy, for we put our trust in you. In you, Lord, is our hope. 
and we shall never hope in vain, and we shall never hope in vain. Lord, fill our hearts with your love as you reveal to us by an angel the coming of your Son as man. So lead us through the, his suffering and death to the glory of his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you and to, with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And this is a meditation on Our Lady of the Rosary on page 108 in the Magnificat of October 2024, volume 26, number 8. Today's feast originated in 1571, when the Battle of Lepanto saw an invading Muslim army defeated in Greece after St. Pius V called the faithful to pray the Rosary for the protection of Europe. In essence, the Rosary is a contemplative immersion in the lives of Jesus and Mary, and a powerful weapon in the spiritual warfare every Christian must in some way face. When we pray the Rosary devoutly, we put on the armor of God that we may be able to resist on the evil day and having done everything to hold our ground. Ephesians 6, 13. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And this is the uh, newer translation of the collect. Pour forth, we beseech you, O Lord, your grace into our hearts, that we whom the incarnation of Christ your Son was made known by the message of an angel and through the intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary by his passion and cross, be brought to the glory of his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. And you may recognize that from the Angelus. <coughs> Hail Mary, full of grace, whose arms did Christ embrace. In love and in prayer, such joy is not contained, nor can it be restrained, but in your heart retain for all to share. Hail Mary, full of grace, hail Mary, full of grace, you saw in time and space supernal light from heaven's holy throne he came unto his own to whom make the father known dispelling night hail mary full of grace christ did himself abase in humble lost the one to who be adored suffered for a reward while you felt sorrow sword under his cross hail mary hail mary full of grace hail mary full of grace to glory from disgrace the lord arose over our sins he won new life has now begun in christ the risen sun, salvation shows now. Hail Mary, full of grace. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise him, all creatures here below. Praise him above, ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and a holy ghost. Amen. The angel of the Lord declared unto Mary, and she conceived by the Holy Spirit, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Behold the handmaid of the Lord, be it done unto me according to thy word. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. 
Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. Let us pray. Pour forth, we beseech thee, O Lord, thy grace into our hearts, that we, to whom the incarnation of Christ thy Son was made known by the message of an angel, may by his passion and cross be brought to the glory of his resurrection, through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Angel Gabriel from heaven came, his wings as drifted snow, his eyes aflame. O oh, hail, said he, thou lowly maiden, Mary, most highly favored lady, the law, oh, 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 oh we are, behold, our blessed mother thou shalt be. All generations, Lord, continually, thy son shall be, Emmanuel, thy seers foretold, most highly favored lady, the Lord, oh, 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 oh we are. The Virgin Mary meekly bowed her head, to me be as it pleases God. She said, My soul shall laud and magnify his holy name. Most highly favored lady, the Lord, oh, 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 we are. Salve Regina, Mater Misericordiae. Vite dulce do, espe nostre salve. Ad te clamamus, exules fili eve. Ad te suspiramus, gementes et flentes, in hac lacrimarum vale. Ea ergo, advocata nostra, illos tuos, Misericorde soculos ad nos converte, et Jesum benedictum fructum ventris tui, nobis post hoc exilium ostende. O oh, 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 clemens, o oh, 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 pia, o oh, 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 dulcis. Virgo Maria. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and life everlasting. Amen. Oh my God, I am heartily sorry for having offended thee, and I detest all my sins because I dread the loss of heaven and the pains of hell. But most of all, because they offend thee, my God, who art all good and deserving of all my love, I firmly resolve, with the help of thy grace, to confess my sins, to do penance, and to amend my life. Amen. <clears throat> Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in the battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray, and do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Eh, 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 eh,
More honorable than the cherubim, and beyond compare, more glorious than the seraphim, in virginity you were God the Word. Oh, Theotokos, we magnify you. 